Welcome to the Mavunit Batsho. Uh, myself, Pratik Kim. I'm your biology assami. And this will be the last video lecture uh, in the Animal Kingdom chapter. So, where uh, previously we have studied about the non-core data and all. So, in this video lecture, we will be studying about the core data and different, uh, you know, classes which comes under the uh, core data. So, yeah, Animal Kingdom. Phylum core data. So coming to the phylum chordata, animals basically they belongs to the whatever the higher animals, higher groups, right? So they belongs to this phylum that is chordata. And uh, they are fundamentally, uh, you know, they are characterized by the presence of the notochord. So that means, so notochord will be present. So uh, to all the animals where notochords are present, they comes under the phylum chordata. And uh, so they normally come under vertebrates, right? So, and they are dorsal as well as. So, this phylum chordata has been divided into mainly three subclasses. One is urochordata or tunicata. Then the another one is cephalochordata. And the last one is vertebrata. So, see, uh, as I told you, like uh, most of the vertebrates, right, they come, like all the vertebrates, where vertebral column is there present. So, they all come under the phylum chordata. Yes. So basically, you will be having three subphylums here. So one is urochordata and the cephalochordata as well as vertebrata. So come, uh, coming to the uh, this thing that is urochordata and cephalochordata together, we normally refer to as protochordates. So that means together we combine this urochordata as well as cephalochordata, and uh, together we normally call them as yes. Together, uh, you know, we normally call it as uh, the protochordates as well as, uh, and they're exclusively marine. Marine, so these are the organisms that uh, strictly, you know, uh, they are present or they depend on the, they are marine living uh, animals or organisms that you can imagine. Then coming to the urochordata, uh, so obviously in urochordata, what happens? The notochord is present only in the tail region. So while in the cephalochordata, what happens? It extends from the head to the tail region. So uh, uro a notochord is a kind of a bony-like structure, right? So there you will only see in the larval tail region where in the urochordata. Whereas when you co uh, when you concentrate on the cephalochordata, it will actually extend from the head to the tail region head to the tail region. So, and uh, it will be persistent. That is, it will be present throughout the life. This is one thing. Examples for the urochordata are Ascidae and uh, Salpe, uh, Dolium and uh, Barchiostroma. Um, so, these are some of the examples of the urochordata. Uh, these are some of the examples of the urochordata and uh, branchiostoma is an example for the cephalochordata. Okay, so yeah, this is all about uh, urochordata as well as cephalochordata. Then the members of these subphylums, that is, uh, they normally possess, that I am told, uh, they normally possess this uh, notochord where in the vertebra. So I have, ta I have been uh, saying that See, when I'm talking about the chordates, okay. So chordates have been classified into three subphylum. So first one is urochordata. Okay. And the second one is cephalo. Cephalo chordata. And the last one is vertebrata. So these together, we normally call them as proto chordates and they're exclusively, they're marine being. Okay. So this is one thing. So what about the notochord presence? So in urochordata, the notochord will be present in the tail region. So during the embryonic development, Whereas in cephalochordata, it will be present from the head to the 
tail region during the embryonic development. So from there itself, it will be present. Whereas vertebrates, right, in the vertebrata, you will see the presence of the notochord. Okay, so you will see the presence of the notochord from the development till to the, uh, from the development, initial development to the end. That means you will see them during the embryonic development itself, you will start seeing or absorbing the notochord full-fledged. So that is what it is. So later on, after the development, after reaching to the adult stage, these notochord has been replaced by uh, this thing that is, uh, what do you say that? A vertebral column or you can call it as, uh, yeah, notochord is replaced by cartilaginous or bony vertebral column in the adult. Okay, that is bones, which is actually present in our body. So that non-cordate uh, have been replaced by, that is vertebral column, okay, in the adult. Thus, all the vertebrates are chordates, but all chordates are not vertebrates. So that it means that all the vertebrates, which, uh, you know, they can be called as the, they come under the phylum chordate itself, but not all phylum chordata comes under vertebrates because there are even other, uh, you know, another two subphylums are also there based on its characteristics. Beside this basic uh, chordata characteristics, the vertebrates, they have ventral muscular heart. That means it has uh, two heart, uh, the heart has been divided into two, three or four chambered heart can be seen. So there is a well-developed kidney for the excretion uh, where in before you should, uh, you, you were, have seen the small phage tubules and all right. But here we have a proper kidney for the excretion and uh, also osmoregulation and paired appendage, uh, appendages, which may be like four limbs or hind limbs. A uh, four limbs or hind limbs are also present. So this is basic about the chordata. So based on this thing, that is the chordata and non-chordata. So now can you like differentiate uh, like what is chordata and what is non-chordata? So one is <clears throat> chordates and the another one is non-chordates. So yeah, can you differentiate what do you mean by chordates and non-chordates? So first point, chordates, non-chordates. In the chordates, notochord will be present. Right. So notochord will be present. Here the notochord will be absent. Then what about another point? Uh, you will also observe the central nervous system is dorsal, right, hollow, as well as single. So whereas uh, here, like in non-cordates, what happens? So this central nervous system will be, central nervous system is not dorsal, but it is ventral. Okay, and uh, solid and double. Then uh, another key points, parent. Parents performed by gills. Uh, parents have been performed by what? Gills. Uh, gills slits. Right. So here gill slits will be absent. Where in non chordates basically the gill slits will be absent. Then Heart you will be seen, right? Heart will be ventral. So here heart will be dorsal. So that too, if it is present. Because in lower organisms, you don't see heart and all, right? Only in higher organisms, you will see heart. So if in lower organism, heart is present, you will see them dorsal. So yeah, then coming to the higher organism, tail. Uh, is normally present, right, in higher organism. So uh, exception is we human beings, even they call that there is a uh, vestigial organ, the tail is present. 
but uh, with the evolution and all, uh, you know, the tail have got disappeared. But almost all the organisms, they do have tail. So tail is present. Then the post anal tail. So will be absent. So this is all about the differences between the chordata as well as non chordata. Right. So coming to this vertebrates, like in chordata, I have told you like three, right? So coming to this uh, vertebrates, they have been divided into two things. One is uh, the Yeah, this vertebrate have been divided into two things. One is Agnata, that is, so these are the, you know, organisms which normally lacks the jaw. And the another one is Gnata stomata. So which normally bears the jaw. Okay. So in Agnada, you will see one class that is Slistostoma. Slistostomata. Stevo. Uh, MATA. Slistostomata is one point. And in agnathostoma, you will actually see again uh, super classes you will see. So yeah, that will be divided into two, which I'll be explaining in the coming video. So moving to the first one, that is the class slistostoma, which actually, uh, you know, comes under the agnatha. So basically, you know, they are... Uh, they lacks jaw, basically the teeth and all. So they, they normally lack that thing. Okay. So yeah, all the living members of this class Listostoma are uh, ectoparasitic. That means they normally depend on other, uh, they, they'll get uh, the, whatever the nutrients are and all right. So uh, by the living organism, but they don't live inside like uh, bacteria or some other insects. They don't live inside the living organisms host, but rather they normally prefer to, you know, or rather they be outside and from that they'll get whatever the essential nutrients they require. Okay. So that means they are something they normally stick on some of the uh, big large fishes or animals. And there they are going to, you know, suck the blood and all. And through that they are going to get the, uh, this thing. So just like leech, the way it sucks the blood uh, through outside, right? So even, uh, so in the same way. So they are actually the ectoparasites. Okay. And uh, this is one point. The second thing is they have an elongated body, which bears about six to 15 parents of gills, slits for the respiration. Then this histostoma has a, that's what. So since the jar is absent, the, instead of that, they have Sucking as well as circular mouth uh, is present, which is without the jaw. So their body is devoid of, uh, you will see the scales on their body, devoid. Matlab, uh, you don't see any scales or the paired fins will not be, uh, like it will be devoid. And cranium and vertebral columns are cartilaginous. Okay. Bony. Then coming to the circulatory system, it is actually the closed type of circulatory system. And uh, cystostomas are basically marine in nature. The, the, that means they normally are marine. But uh, uh, when it comes to the migrate, uh, migratory period, okay, so they normally, that is the baby uh, for the for spanning, okay, they normally prefer the fresh water. So they'll, for, for, for spanning, they'll go to the fresh water. That means to lay again something like that. And once it is done, uh, you know, after laying eggs and after, uh, you know, having uh, uh, the male and female, they are getting their copulation and all is done. So within few days, what happens? They will die. So then the larva after uh, it undergoes the metamorphosis, like uh, you won't see any morphological similarities between the parent as well as adult. 
and once the metamorphosis is done again it will return back to its uh, to the ocean okay example are petromyzon is one of the example and myxin that is hagfish is one of the example so you can actually see a kind of uh, you know sucking uh, kind of mouth will be present so that is, uh, and they normally attach to some large uh, fishes or animals like they attach to the shark or something like that. And there they are going to extract the nutrients. So this is all about the cyclostoma that is agnata. Next class is chondriopsis. See, uh, this class is uh, somewhat amazed because, you know, again, they are uh, the marine animals with streamlined body and having cartilages. Streamlined body means it is somewhat like this, okay? So this is somewhat like stream-like body you will see. And uh, mouth is located ventrally. Okay, mouth is located ventrally. And notochord is present throughout their life. What about gills? Gills, gill slits are separate and uh, without operculum. That is, without any gills are not covered by some any other uh, you know skinny structure or something. It is open. This is thing. Then actually the skin is very rough and contain minute scales will be present. Plicoid uh, coid scales will be present and teeth. You know they are modified. Okay, they the teeth are modified. Plus uh, placoid scales, which are bar barely di uh, directed. That means they are outwards directed. For example, if this is the mouth, right? So you will see like this kind of structure. Okay. So that is what they are saying. So teeth are basically there uh, some in some uh, fishes or some organisms. The teeth are directed outwards, and their jaws are very powerful here. Uh, like you know, very sharp and powerful, and uh, predators. That means they normally depend on other animals. They're predators, and due to the absence of air bladder, they have to swim uh, constantly to avoid from the shrinking. So this is another important point. Then what about the heart? There are two chambers. So that is one is auricle and the one will be the ventricle. Some of them have an electronic organ also is present. You have seen about some uh, fishes like they normally give electric shock, right? Torpedo is one of an example for that. And some actually possesses the poisonous stings. Okay. So that like... Trigon is another example, which normally possesses a poisonous string. So if it uh, uh, if it cuts your skin or bites, right? So it is somewhat poisonous. So they are obviously cold-blooded animals. So they are called as pyclothermous animal. And they lack the capacity to regulate their body temperature. And uh, coming to the sexes, they are separated. And in male pelvic fins, they bear the claspers they have internal fertilization and many of them are basically vv paras example for this is solodium solodino that is the dogfish is one example then strawfish that is pristris is one of the example then great white shark carcagon no <clears throat> carcarodon is one of the example which is actually called as the great white shark and Trigon, that is string shark, is one of the example. Uh, yeah, this is how it does. You can see this as actually the pristis, and they. This is an example for. Sorry, done. So you can see the teeth have been projected outwards, and it is very sharp and very strong. And coming to the scales also, they are very strong. Okay. So, yeah, you can actually find these kind of, you know, uh, mapping and a very easy way of understanding and all in our Memonite notes. So, yeah, you will get this all in the Memonite app. So, make sure that you download the Memonite app.
the next one is the class osteoectus. In this class, mainly they uh, more organisms, they are marine uh, as well as freshwater fishes with a uh, bony endoskeleton will be present. So inside, so their body is streamlined. You can see here their body is somewhat streamlined. Streamlined matlab uh, fish. You have seen the structure of fish, right? So how the body is very stream, uh, like this kind of structure, right? So this will help, uh, you know, these organisms to penetrate in water against the water current easily. Then mouth is mostly terminal, somewhat internal. So they have four pairs of gills, very important, which are covered by the operculum on each side. This is one point. So skin is covered by the cystoid tenoid scales. Okay. So this is very important. It is covered by the cystoid and tenoid scales. Air bladder is present, which regulates the buoyancy. This is another important point. And what about the heart? There are actually two chambered heart. One is the auricle and the another one is the ventricle. They are cold-blooded animals. This is another point. And uh, success, see, whatever the marine organisms, they are cold-blooded itself. Okay. So, and coming to the sexes, they are separated. So, obviously, the fertilization will be external itself. Uh, most of them are oviparous and development is, uh, you know, direct. So, that means uh, it is a direct development. The offspring, you know, they normally resemble their parents. And example for this is in uh, concentrating to the marine being. So, exocortius, that is flying fish, is one example. Hippocampus, that is the seahorse, is an example. So, whereas in freshwater fishes, rohu, labeo, okay, and katla, katla, that is katla. So, is an example. Maguru. Magur, that is Clarius is one of the example. And uh, aquarium fishes are beta, that is fighting fish. You know fighting fish, right? In most of the houses, we normally have this fighting fish. And the angel fishes uh, are also preferred for, you know, you normally keep these kinds of fishes in our house. So this is the example of osteoctus, right? So the next class is class amphibians. The class amphibians, yes, the the class amphibians can live in aquatic as well as in the terrestrial being also. So most of them have two pairs of limbs and the body has been divided into head, trunk and uh, coming to the tail, tail may be present in some. And tail may be absent in some. Okay, in adult, uh, you 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 might see the tail are absent. Then amphibians are. Uh, you will also see scale and uh, without scale also you will see. And coming to the skin, it is somewhat moisture in condition. Then the eyes have eyelids are present in the eyes and. Uh, Trimpanus normally it represents the ear, so it will be present somewhat in this way, okay, in this region. Then uh, element elementary canal, then you have the urinary uh, as well as tract and the reproductive tract are also present. They are opened into common chamber called as cloaca, which opens to the exte exterior. So that is basically it has all this elementary canal, then the urinary reproductive tract and all. So they have only one opening. Then coming to the respiration, it is through the gills, lungs, as well as through the skin. So the heart is three chambered where two will be auricle and the one will be the ventricle. So yeah, they are cold blooded animals and sexes are separated where fertilization will obviously be external and they are oviparous and development is indirect. So it normally shows metamorphosis. So example are buffo that is stored and uh, tree frog, rana that is another frog, hyla is also a tree frog, salamandus and limbless amphibia that is ectophys. 
Okay, so these are some of the examples for the amphibians. The class reptiles, they are mostly terrestrial animals and uh, their body has been covered by tri and con cornified uh, skin. That means somewhat hardy layer or cell uh, shell like structure. Okay, then you have this epidermal scales are also present or cuticles are present. So they do not have any external ear opening. So then the tympanum represents ear again. And the limbs where, when present are two pairs of limbs you will see. So one and another. So obviously two pairs of limbs you will see. Then heart is usually three chambered heart. So but in crocodile if you see they are actually exceptional. It has four chambered heart. So reptiles are phylo phylothermal. That means they are yes. So, see, in the last what we have discussed actually, when coming to the cold-blooded animals, yes. So, in the same way, right? So, we have here that is the pikilotherms. So, then coming to the snakes and lizards, they shed the uh, scales as skin uh, stuck. Like you have seen the snakes, right? That normally shed their skin, outer skin and new fresh skin comes. So, this is one thing. And obviously, the sexes are separated where fertilization is internal and they are oviparous, egg laying, and development is obviously indirect stage. So, examples are turtile, that is, helon, and uh, tortoise, testudo, then chameleon, that is, three lizard, calotus, that is, garden lizard, crocodile, crocodile, and uh, alligator. So yeah, wall lizard, that is Hemidaculis, then poisonous snake, Naja Naja, that is Cobra, then Bangurus, that is Krite and Viper, that is Viper, Vipera. So these are some of the examples of the class Reptilia. Next, coming to the class Aves. So class Aves, you know, they are characteristic features of all the birds, they normally comes under Aves itself. And uh, what will be the characteristic features? Presence of feather and most of them can fly except ostrich. That is the bird which cannot fly. So yeah, all the birds will possess the beak. Four limbs are actually modified into the wings here. And hind limbs generally, uh, they have scales and modified for walking purpose. In some organisms, swimming and the clasping purpose, clasping, like uh, holding on the tree and all, tree branches. So skin is very dry without any gland, except the oil gland at the base of the tail, you will see the oil gland. So in our skin, oil gland is present all over, right? But in the birds, oil gland is not present, but on uh, the base of the tail, it is present. Then the endoskeleton is fully uh, ossified. That is, endoskeleton is fully bony and long bones are hollow with air cavity. That means bones normally possesses the air cavity. Why? Uh, to make, uh, uh, to become lightweight and help them in flying. Okay. That is uh, one of the uh, very important point, even on the neat aspects. Then coming to the digestive tract, uh, it has a very digestive tract of the bird. So it has an additional chambers, the crop as well as gizzard are some of the chambers that you will see in the digestive tract. So heart is completely, you know, four chambered and they're warm blooded animals that is homeothermal. So pikilothermal means cold blooded as we have discussed previous. So warm blooded, that means homeothermal animal. So they are able to maintain a constant body temperature. Then respiration is through the lungs. There is an air sac which is connected to the lungs, which supplies the respiration. Then uh, sexes are basically separated. So you will see the male and female. Fertilization is internal now. So uh, they are oviparous and development is obviously indirect. Example, Crow, that is Corvex and uh, Columba, that is Pigeon, Parrot, then Ostrich, uh, Pavo, that is Peacock, Penguin, that is Aptinodites, and Neof, 
foreign. So which is nothing but yeah, vulture is an example for the apes. So the next class is, or maybe the last class is the class mammalia. So this class mammalia, it includes the found in variety of habitat, like in the polarized capsules, you'll find in the desert, mountains, forest areas, grassland, and as well as in the dark caves also, you will find the class mammalia, organisms, animals. So some of them have been adopted to flying or live in the water. The most of, like, they, they are found in flying as well as living in the water also and as well as the that terrestrial being also. So most unique uh, mammalian characteristics is the presence of secretion of the milk uh, production with the help of the milk gland is present. So that is actually called as what mammary glands are present in the female by which the young one is being nourished. That is the young one is going to feed that milk from the milk gland and it is going to get its nutrition in the starting initial stage. So it has two pairs of limbs. One is uh, which for the first pair of limbs helps in walking, running, climbing, uh, burrowing, swimming or flying. So that means the limbs, pair of limbs, hand as well as leg, it uh, normally functions this all. Uh, pro uh, it, it normally programs this all function. And coming to the skin, it is unique because they normally the skin possesses hair. And external ear is actually, uh, pinea is actually present outside. And different types of teeth are present like jaw, in the jaw, like sharp, clav and all teeth are present. And heart is obviously four chambered. And there are again warm blooded uh, organisms that is homeothermus. And respiration is through the well-defined lung, uh, ling lungs will be present. Sexes are separated and fertilization is again external. So they are VV paras with that is they normally don't lay egg. Instead, they, uh, you know, they give birth to their young ones directly with few exceptions. Uh, in some uh, organisms only, you will see the exceptions like uh, platyelementus, sorry, not platyelementus, uh, platypus. Okay, platypus is an animal that normally has an exception. So that normally, even though it's a mammal, it normally uh, lays the egg. So yeah, di development obviously it is uh, direct. Then examples are oviparous. Yeah, this is platypus is one example. Ornithorhysons and viviparous, that is kangaroo, flying fox, tyropos, okay, macropus, then camel, monkey, macaca, ratus that is rat, dog, canis, felix that is cat, elipus that is elephant, equus that is horse, Dol uh, dolphins that is common dolphin comes as an example, baleno of uh, petra that is blue whale also comes as a mammalia. So here you can actually see that dolphin and uh, you know uh, the Dolphin as well as the blue whale, even though they are aquatic, I mean, they normally live in the aquatic condition also, but still they are, uh, they are considered to be mammals. The next one is Panthera tigris, that is tiger, Panthera reolion, and still many more examples comes, okay? So, yeah, this is an example. So, you have uh, one thing is Platypus. So this is actually platypus, which is even though the mammal, but still it normally, uh, you know, lays eggs. You know, this is kangaroo and you know, this is bat. So flying mammal and you know, this is blue bell, so which is in the water. So this is all about the phylum mammalia. See, a uh, quick chapter revision is also there, which you will find it in our memory tab. So where this entire one chapter, uh, one page normally covers the entire chapter in a very small, 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 uh, minute topics and all. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, press the bell icon. And even if you are new to this channel, make sure that you join our Telegram channel. So because every detail uh, related to the NEET 2025, and uh, the memory tab and everything will be, you know, updated in our Telegram channel. So make sure that you join our Telegram channel.
and just keep watching the video and all the best for your Brahmastra test series four. Okay. So make sure that you revise everything perfectly and understand uh, every topics, each and every corner of topics. Make sure that you revise the entire textbook line to line. And yes, keep attending uh, this kind of test every time. Bye. All the best.